Welcome back to Low Carbon Lifestyle. The last few episodes that I've done have been focused on our heat pump. You can go back and look at how smug I am to be warming our home without burning any fossil fuels locally. But for most homes, and I suspect your home, if you're watching this video, you'll still be heating using a gas boiler. That's okay, that's the system we live in. But are there any ways to make a step change in your link to your emissions from the heating system without shelling out a fortune and ripping out completely and without making your home any colder? Well, the answer is yes, there are. Episode 37 is gonna try and help you reduce your emissions in your boiler by at least 5%, but maybe as high as 10%. My name is Tom and this is a little series about a low carbon lifestyle. Since 2005 in the UK, the majority of boiler installations have been using condensing boilers. And this is a clever bit of technology that uses the heat in the boiler exhaust, because when we burn something, there are fumes and they tend to be pretty warm. It uses that heat to preheat water before it enters the main heat exchanger of the boiler. So before it enters the main flamey bit. And they're called condensing boilers because they are condensing the water va vapor and a few other things in the exhaust. And, and when we do that, when we condense that water vapor, we're taking heat out in the process. So it's very likely that you have a condensing boiler at home. And this will be much more efficient than a non-condensing boiler. But there's also a trick to get a condensing boiler working even more efficiently. So boilers distribute heat to our rooms in our home using a radiator circuit. Hot water flowing to the radiators and then returning back to the boiler after it's deposited some heat in the rooms. So we have a flow temperature and we have a return temperature of the water. The return temperature tends to be about 20 degrees lower than the flow and the radiators tend to be sized to put out enough heat with this change of temperature. So it gives out heat because of the change temperature across them. Traditionally, heating systems were designed to run at 80 degrees flow and 60 degrees return. But if we run a heating system at those temperatures, the condensing part of the boiler doesn't work that well. 60 degrees C on the return isn't cool enough to have the boiler exhaust, con exhaust condense and therefore give off heat. So we can improve the efficiency of a condensing boiler by reducing the temperature of the flow. Every degree lower will mean a little bit better efficiency. So why don't you try it? If you have a com combi boiler, one that heats your house but also gives you fairly instantaneous hot water, then you're likely to have a couple of dials that can change the settings of the hot water temperature and of the boiler flow temperature. They may have an image of a radiator and an image of a tap next to them. If you turn the radiator dial down, there may be a screen that responds to that and tells you the temperature if, uh, that it's working at. This will be the flow temperature of the boiler. So what temperature are we aiming for? We're aiming for 55 degrees. This should still provide a nice level of heat to your rooms, but also allow the condensing part of the boiler to work efficiently. If you don't have a boiler that shows temperatures on it, but instead of a dial just for numbers, maybe one to six, Setting the dial to halfway will probably be, probably be about right to get to 55 degrees. So around three or four on the dial. You may have a boiler that has a control screen and buttons, etc., etc. I can't really help you with that. Get the, the user manual out, but find out what you need to do to set the flow temperature to 55. And you can do something similar to the temperature of hot water. You really don't need more than 50 degrees from a comic boiler. Our hot water is set at 45 degrees. So if your boiler is set to deliver water higher than that, why don't you turn that down too? If you change the setting on the boiler, this will now change the temperature of your radiators and it will increase the efficiency of your boiler. This could be by up to 10%. That's not necessarily noticeable on your bill. It varies so much, but every little helps. Only 15 million homes with a combi boiler like this followed what you do, we'd have a noticeable impact on our emissions nationally does come with a couple of caveats. First, if you have a timer set on your system to bring the temperature up when you want it higher and then get rid of it, just turn it off when you don't need it, 
you may need to change this as the boiler may need to run for a little longer to heat the house. So instead of sprinting to get the temperature up when you need it and then switching off, it may rumble away for a longer time. So maybe set it half an hour earlier than you normally would. Have a little play with the timings at that lower flow temperature. And if you can get the timings right, you'll be burning less gas and emitting much less CO2. Caveat number two. If you have a boiler linked to a hot water cylinder, so not a combi boiler, then this reduction of flow temperature isn't really gonna help. The boiler needs to heat the hot water cylinder to a level to remove the risk of Legionella, mm -hmm. and that tends to be about 65 degrees C. So it needs to be set to run that a little bit higher. You could reduce the flow temperature a little bit from 80 to 70 or 65, but any lower risks from nasties growing in your hot water tank. And that's not a reason to go combi now, right now, we do need your hot water cylinder if we're going to install a heat pump. So you're already a bit along the way to a low carbon heating system. Heat pumps run at a much lower temperature, lower than 65, but they tend to be programmed with a weekly anti-Legionella purge to heat the cylinder high enough to kill any bacteria. And that's how you get away with it, with a heat pump. So have a play, but don't go too low. Okay, so we've reduced the flow temperature of our combi boiler to about 55 degrees and we've made a step change in the emissions linked to our heating system. But there is more. As we move to low carbon heating systems, we're trying to lower the temperature of our radiator circuits. We're trying to lower the temperature that our radiator circuits run at. The lower, the better for heat pumps, because they run much more efficiently at lower temperatures. And we tend to assume on the coldest day, a heat pump will be running at about mm. 45 degrees C. So the stretch challenge for you this heating season and you, with your combi boiler is how low can you go? Not a family game of limbo after Christmas dinner, but a chance to, to try out what, it, what life would be like with a heat pump. If you can go from 55 to 45 degrees C and you're still happy with how warm your house was, then you might be able to install a heat pump without much change to your radiator circuit. This could bring costs down significantly and it could make the transition to a heat pump much easier. If at 45 degrees C flow, certain rooms were a bit cool, this could mean that the radiator in that room needs to be a bit wider or a bit deeper or built with a second panel. It might need replacing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that your house wouldn't be suitable for a heat pump. We live in a Victorian terrace and it's working really well. So why don't you have a play? Turn the flow temperature down and let me know how low you can go. Thanks for watching. If you think this is useful advice at all, interesting, please do share with friends um, you think might have a similar heating system to you. And feel free to get in touch if you want more information. I'll post some links to some other helpful content for people in the heating industry below. You might find it helpful.